Hello, everybody that's coming to see me. I have my camera upside down, so I'm fixing that now. <laughs> All righty. I think I've got it right. Oh, I don't know who's here yet. Hey, Kylie. So glad to have you here. I am running late today. I've been busy. I've been filming, doing lots of things. So you're going to have to bear with me as we get ready. I hope everybody's having a fabulous day. Hey, Tina. So glad you're here. Glad, glad, glad you're here. Bear with me a moment as I set some things up here. What's everybody been doing? Have you been uh, having fun? Uh, anything exciting going on in your world today? While you're uh, coming in and you're waiting on me, I'll throw some cards up here that I made. These are using the new Calico Collage freebie. If you go to calicocollage.com and you go to her freebies, that's exactly what that is. It's free. You can download it and use it. Take a look at that for a moment. What else have y'all been doing? Anything exciting? I'm grabbing some papers and things to work on. I've been doing videos all morning and time got away from me. I've only made about eight videos today. <laughs> so I've, I've stayed really busy. <laughs> so glad you could be here. Hey, hey, hey. So let me... um. Let me give you the Calico Collage Freebies URL so you'll have it. All righty. Pace. Yes, eight. <laughs> yes, eight. I've been busy. I'm working on a workshop for Canvas Court Brands. Vintage JJ. Hey, Erin. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Erica. Laura. Judy. Tina. Boho Daydreams. Yay! I'm so glad you're here. Yay! Dying Retreat. Awesome. What else we got here? Paula. Cat. Hey, the pastel cat. I'm so glad you're here. Cindy and Teresa. Uh, Dottie Pick. I don't, I don't know if that's Dottie Pick or PC. <laughs> so glad to have you here. Uh, hey, Robin. Hey, Cindy. All right, I'm going to try not to bump the camera too much. <laughs> I got my, I got a partial beverage here. I've been so busy. I hadn't had a chance to fill it up again. So glad you're here. Glad, 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 glad you're here. All right. So today we're going to play with napkins. You're welcome, Kylie. Yeah, check them out. There's some really pretty freebies out there. So this is all done with the freebie sheet that's brand new that she just came out with. I kind of twisted her arm just a little bit. And by the way, if y'all want to share this, please feel free to share it. Um, share it with friends. Share it in Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram, wherever you want. Just share it to invite some people if you have friends in. Uh, that you message all the time, send them a link. Okay. Awesome. All right. So what I've got here is we're not going to make exactly this, but I wanted to give you sort of an example of what we can do. Uh, and, and welcome Lucia. She's in the Netherlands. We've got people from all over the world. So we're so glad to have you here. Ah, thank you, Austin. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So if you didn't see, hey, uh, Tammy, I didn't see you in there. I see you now. <laughs> so I'm glad you were able to stop by. So good to see you all here. I get excited about this, and I've been trying not to uh, ramp up too much so that I fizzle out by the time the video gets ready. <laughs> but I thought I would share a, a a couple of techniques that I use for applying napkins to things. Um, definitely, if you have any questions, 
please ask those questions. I will do my best to answer them. Hey, Marie, Marie Nicole Designs. She and I became friends two years ago because of uh, Canvas Court Brands and Brutus Monroe. She now, I believe you're in California. I think that's right. She used to live in Oklahoma. Her husband's in the military, in the Air Force, I believe, and they travel. So yeah, I miss you too. I know, I know that baby of yours, that little girl, isn't she almost a year and a half, two years old? <laughs> Callie, okay, I thought you were Marie. So it's really kind of like a homecoming whenever we have a live video and people come in. I just, I'm like, hey, I'm so good to see you. <laughs> She's 15 months old. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, yeah, subscribe too, if you would subscribe. Um, a couple of things I want to share. I've shared this in my groups. Thank you. I got my, I, I painted on myself and I've already boogered them up. But <laughs> Hey, Carol. Um, I shared this in Facebook and I wanted to, everybody to know this. Facebook has now put some analytics and um, regulators on your posts that if you post something with a link outside of Facebook, meaning I went to Facebook, I put a picture and a link to a YouTube video, Facebook is going to move that down in the priority of letting people see that post. So the reason I'm telling you this is if I do post something, make sure that you like that video, that comment, that post, and then you make a comment. The longer, the better. If you aren't already following me on my Facebook, which is Linda Israel, that link is in my description box and I could probably grab it too to give to you. Make sure you follow and put C first so that you'll see my projects and anywhere else that I am uh, sending these. So if you are in one of my Facebook groups, make sure you join that Facebook group so you can see that. That way uh, you'll see all the posts. And if you are a person that shares YouTube videos on Facebook, partnership with a friend and ask them to leave a comment on your post. So whenever you post your video, say, hey, friend, would you make a comment about that video? And that way it'll be you know, easier for your friends to find it. You know, and I agree, Erin says that Facebook never fails to show her the most ridiculous ads, but not the stuff I want. And that's how it's going with Facebook. It's getting rather annoying how much ads they even put. If you have a native to Facebook video and you've turned on ads, they'll put ads in the middle of your video on Facebook. And I keep getting ads for like Sonic and I don't even go to Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can't skip them. It's annoying. <laughs> so get a buddy with a friend, ask them to leave a comment on your post. You do the same for them and that'll help you be seen just a little bit more. And also another tip for you on Facebook is if I have a post and let's say uh, Kylie puts a message under my post and then if Aaron or Gloria or Vicky then post to Kylie that also is good to Facebook because that means we're interacting with each other we're not just posting something and then running away we're actually sticking around and having a conversation so that's another thing to have I agree Marie says Facebook is frustrating for sure Yes, the, even the ads in the marketplace. And have you noticed that if you open up Messenger in Facebook, that you see ads there as well? That's pretty annoying to me as well. Okay, so let's kind of get started here. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I apply napkins to things. So first of all, what we've got here is a paper napkin. And Usually napkins have multiplies. Hey, Norella, so glad you're here. They have mul multi uh, plies to them. A quality napkin has two to three layers. So I've got a piece of what I call scotch tape, transparent tape, something like that. 
and I'm going to put it on the back side and lift. Sometimes you don't have to do that. The papers just fall right apart. But in this case, I had to cheat just a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm peeling these layers up. There's three layers to this napkin. And I'm going to peel off all of these layers here. Happy birthday, Norella. I hope you had a fabulous day. All right. So we've gotten the layers off. Some people keep these. I have enough CRAP. I don't need to keep this. So I'm throwing it away. <laughs> Okay, so next we've got our napkin here. I'm going to trim this really fast using my paper cutter only because I don't want to deal with the whole piece at one time. So I'm just kind of folding it in half and figuring out where the halfway mark is. Okay. Happy birthday, Norella. Everybody's going to say that to you. Thanks, Cindy. So glad you're here. If you have a YouTube channel, make a comment that says, I have a YouTube channel. You won't be able to put your link unless you are an admin or moderator for the YouTube uh, chat today. But if you have a YouTube, say, hey, I have a YouTube. And then try to subscribe to everybody there, okay? All right, so here's what I've got. I've got a Bible page. So a lot of people ask me about how um, <laughs> I was able to cut it. You saw that. Um, I, I go to thrift stores and buy books. Yeah, stop by Tammy's channel. Stop by Kylie Koo's channel. Ugh. All right, I'm getting, I'm making a mess. Avalanche, who's ever had a, a craft catastrophe? Avalanche, where you know, you, you never pile too many things up, right? <laughs> so I bought a, a family Bible at the thrift store. Someone had written in it. So realistically, no family is going to use this because it's been written in. And I just go in and start cutting the pages out. So that's a tip for you to get a Bible cheap. And I don't feel bad about using it. It's just a book, okay? The, the word is in your heart. It's not on the pieces of paper. All right, so we've got this. So I'm gonna get one more thing here. I think I want, yeah, let's get this. I'm getting my mixed media little pad. And the only reason why is because I don't want to get stuff on my desk and have to wipe it up. All right. So I've got a paintbrush here that I've dipped in water and I'm going to rub off the excess so it's not sopping wet. It's just damp. Okay. And this is one technique that we're going to use. I'm going to use the best glue ever. I'm going to use an older bottle, but I wanted you to see the name and we're going to squeeze out some glue on this page and what i like about this glue for this project in particular is that it when it air dries not when it's adhered to two pieces but when it air dries it's still tacky so you can use it even though You've let it sit for a little while. So all I'm doing now is I'm quickly going in here and I'm spreading this glue around. And basically the reason why I'm doing it quickly is I just don't want it to have a little bead of glue on top. I want it to have a nice smooth coat over the whole page. Other glues work okay, but the best glue ever by Scrap Perfect works really great for this because, like I said, I can let this set for a few minutes and it'll still be tacky. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to put my paintbrush into some water. I don't know if you hear that over there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my piece of paper down. I've got my napkin. I'm going to line it up on my page. See if 
do we got about it's about okay it is the same height i couldn't remember if it was the same height so i'm just going to start at the bottom and i'm putting my thumb down on it and just slightly tacking it down in place and you want to be careful that you don't put it down too soon and we're just going to smooth it out and i mean i didn't get it straight this time because i was in a hurry but that's a quick way to get a napkin down okay all right so i'm going to set this aside for a moment and we're going to do this again with a different product So I've got my page again, my other piece, and this time I've got a glue stick. And this is another technique that I like to use. Yeah, I love how the words show through on the napkin. It really looks cool the way that comes through. All right, so now I'm going to take glue stick, cheap Dollar Tree glue stick. You want a juicy one, not dried up. And I'm going to go around the perimeter perimeter of my papers and across and up and then I just try to fill in as quickly as I can. Now with a glue stick you do have to work fast because it can dry before you get your napkin down and that's why I like using the scrap perfect on some project especially if they're big like this so that I don't have to work too fast. And so I'm going to line this up again across the bottom, kind of stick my hand down and just slide this over and then pat it. I'm just patting it. I'm not rubbing it. I'm patting it into place. Okay. And I don't worry about getting too much glue stick over the edges because when it dries, it does not stay tacky. So if you are doing a small project, you can glue that down and not worry about it. So now you've got this piece that you've created, okay? You can do all kinds of this, things with it. It's paper, okay? It's paper now. So you can use this to make a pocket, to make a page in a junk journal. So lots of different things that you can do with this, okay? Hey, Angelica, I'm going to say hello for everybody for a moment. Hey, Cindy and Krista, so glad to see you guys here. <laughs> Aaron says, my husband thought I was nuts collecting napkins. I need to use some up. I could host a party for 400 sloppy Joe eaters. So Naomi says you can make it even more translucent with matte medium or Mod Podge, etc. So where I painted this with the Scrap Perfect glue, you could paint it with Mod Podge and then place it on there. But so you can kind of see the difference that the one with the Scrap Perfect, to me, it's adhered really well. It's almost translucent. The one with the glue stick, it doesn't always stick all over because that glue stick can dry really fast. All right, so where else are we? Do we have any questions so far? So Naomi says to put, she likes to put uh, Mod Podge or Matte Medium on the top of a napkin. So yeah, I believe you can do that. I don't because I always have my napkins rip on me, but you could do that. So Austin, she is at, I think it's a she. Austin, are you he or is she? <laughs> um, so Austin has asked, when you make journaling cards, do you add lines with a stamp marker or none at all? It depends. Some of my journaling cards, I will add uh, stamps to them. Some of them, I will just leave them the way they are. Sometimes I'll use pre-printed cards that have lines on them. So it just kind of depends on what you like to do. Okay, thank you, Austin. I wasn't sure if you were a guy or, or a girl. I apologize for that because people have unusual names. So, <laughs> and thanks for being here, Austin. I think you're the, the only guy today. <laughs> so glad to have you here. I know Austin follows me on Facebook, so I appreciate coming. Okay, so Scatterbrain Linda. All right, let's see what we can do next. 
So with these napkins, we can do just about anything. <laughs> Austin says, people who personally know me wonder the same thing. Guy or girl? Hmm. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so I've got my napkins. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? All right, let's let's make a journal card with this. So I'm just going to grab one of these. When I made these journal cards, this was made with a piece of a Bible page in the background that I sprayed with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I sprayed lace with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I use some doilies on here. So let's see what we can, I'm going to grab a few things. So we've got some lace here. I've got a doily. I've got some paper. All right. And I think what I'm going to do is I've got a journal card that's approximately, what is this? Five, oh, I know what it was. I had an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half in size. And that's just because I took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and cut it into four pieces. And I have a bunch of this paper. All right. So let me move this out of the way. And then I cut out with my silhouette all of these freebie images from Calico Collage. I just imported the image into silhouette and had it select the area that I wanted to trim out. And then these were all the little pieces. All right, is everybody with me? We doing okay? So I've got this piece of cardstock and I'm going to get my crocodile and I'm just going to trim the corners to be round just a little bit. All right. Do we have any questions? Hey, Robin. I, I know that the our Facebook group has had um, uh, a napkin swap. So there's lots of them out there. Okay. So. Krista wants to know, is there any particular kind of paper uh, when you print images like the Calico Collage images? I use one of, one of three things. It kind of depends on how I'm printing these. I have a laser printer and I also have an inkjet printer. This was printed on my laser printer and I use regular standard copy paper to print this image. So hopefully you can see how clear it is, how it looks. Does that look pretty good? So that's just standard copy paper on my laser printer. If I want it on cardstock, I have to print it on my inkjet printer and it's a different quality of printing, okay? And then if I'm doing something really fancy, I will print on color laser paper. It does cost more, but I will sometimes print on color laser paper. And it kind of gives it more of a sheen to the paper, and it has a really nice feel to it. I've made several journals with it. A lot of people like the way that looks. So that's what I've done. All right, so what we're going to do with this napkin piece is I think what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to rip this because I want it to have a distressed look to it. So I'm just ripping across the top and we're going to go down the side. I just find it's just easier to kind of do the perimeter, if you will. And then I'm going to look at this and right about here, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to rip this down. I'm kind of using the text on the Bible page to kind of keep me going somewhat straight, but I'm not worried about it not being straight. Okay. All right. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask. And now I'm just tearing the bottom portion. And I'll save this piece because we can use it later. All right. So we've got this piece here. What do you think as far as that napkin is concerned? This gives a great texture, does it not? I'm going to get my distressed ink. So this time I'm using walnut stain. And we've got the blending tool. I'm just going to go in here like so. All 
Okay, so someone asked me, where do I get my ink? Well, Cindy, I have had my ink for a really long time, but when I buy new ink, I will either buy it through a friend that I know that's a friend of mine, and sometimes I will go straight to Amazon and I have an Amazon affiliate link. So in my description box, if you see a product that I offer, then I have a link to my uh, Amazon wish list so that you are not wish list, Amazon shopping. I'm going to get the one for the distressed ink if I can find it. So. I'm on the wrong page here. So I buy mine through Amazon. Sometimes I buy them at, say, Hobby Lobby, um, some of the local uh, stops here in Oklahoma. We've got a couple of scrapbookies type stores here in Oklahoma that I will go to, and they usually take pretty good care of us. So I'm going to copy, link, go here, and paste. So here is the link to my distressed ink. So if you want that, you can do that. Oh, you know, I do, Kylie. I I have set up my UK. I have to find it. <laughs> and I will send that again, okay? All right. Let's see. Ha, huh, okay. So Naomi wanted to know for Melissa... She wanted to know pros and cons of using rice paper napkins versus typical napkins. I would think that they would be about the same. I know I have some rice paper, but I don't have a napkin. This is a really old package of rice paper that I've had for years and years and years. So a rice paper napkin is, in my opinion, might be a little bit heavier than a traditional napkin. And so basically, I would think it would work just fine. It may not be as transparent. I have not picked up any of those types of napkins, so I can't honestly tell you for sure the difference, but I don't see why not. So Austin wants to know, basic sewing machine with a zigzag stitch specifically for tags, journals, and such. I can't sew to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Austin, I would say I have been sharing a, uh, it's a brother um, project one way. It's about a $200 machine only because I feel that if you pay just a little bit more than like the $99 machine that you may see at a Walmart per se because it has more stitches in it and it's going to be a sturdier machine than some of those others. Okay. And I can, if you'll message me on Facebook, I'll send you a link. So you'll have that. Okay, Austin. All right. So we've added some distressed ink and like a squirrel, I got distracted. We've added some distressed ink. So let's adhere this down. So I'm just going to grab some glue here and I want to put it right on the perimeter. If I can get it to come out, there it goes. I need one more bottle, I think, of glue. And I'm using Scrap Perfect's glue. You can order direct from their website. And I haven't shared a link to Amazon, but I know you can buy it on Amazon as well. All right, so I'm going to look at this and see which way I want it. I think I want it that way, like so. Donna, you can watch this video from the beginning when I'm done, okay? So at the end, you, when with we're done recording, you can watch it, okay? All right, so now what I want to do is I've got this piece of lace, and I want to add some color to it. So I'm going to trim a piece that will fit onto my card. And this is not a folded journal card. It's just one side. I'm going to lay this in my spray box, and I'm going to get fully purple. It's one of my favorite colors from Tattered Angels. I'm almost out. I need to get some more. I'm going to spray that piece of lace. I like doing this because 
I don't have to have purple lace and teal lace and green lace and pink lace. I can have ivory lace and I have tattered angels, which will allow me to color the lace. I can color ribbon. I can color paper. So it's more than a one trick pony per se. You have multiple ways you can use this. Now that's going to be wet for a minute or two. So we're going to get our heat tool out. I'm trying to grab it because it fell on the floor earlier and we're going to dry this. I'm just using the Ranger heat it tool. It's a really quiet machine. I like it. Hey, Angie. All right. Any more questions? Alicia, you know, I could probably make my own ink spray, but because I'm on the design team for Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and I know the owner really well, <laughs> I'm able to use all of the projects that I share. She gives me credit to buy from her shop. So technically it doesn't cost me anything except my time of sharing how to use her product. So that's why. Hey, Debbie. Debbie Music is a longtime friend of mine. I've known her for over 20 years. We were in a Oki Inkers stamp club. They kind of disbanded several years ago because everybody's life changed, but we're still friends. And so I'm glad you stopped by. Yes, I am a Tattered Angels addict. Okay, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to take this piece of lace. We're going to put something on top of it. So I'm just going to slide it over just a little bit. And right about here, I'm going to make a line to hold my lace in place for right now. And I'm just kind of slightly patting that down. <laughs> it was so long ago, Debbie. We were babies. We were so young. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see what else can we put on here. I've got a paper doily, and I'm going to start carrying paper doilies in my shop. So if you are having a hard time finding this smaller uh, four-inch paper doilies, I just ordered some wholesale, so they should be with me soon. I know I'm going to put that there. All right, which one should we do? I was trying to see if I already had a piece of paper I could use. Let's use this one, I guess. I like this bird image. What do you think of that? Isn't that kind of pretty? Bye, Marie. So glad you came over. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, I plan on being at Creativation in January. I've got to talk to Christine uh, from Canvas Court Brands to find out what she wants me to do. Yes, uh, uh, my mop-up page will also be great to use. All right, so here's what I'm going to do with this calico collage image. She has kind of given us a distressed edge, but my paper didn't get perfectly cut perfectly, so I'm just going around the edge with some distressed ink. I'm so glad you're going to be there, Marie. You'll be closer this time, I think, won't you? <laughs> the driving from Oklahoma. Ah. All righty. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to adhere it down to this piece of cardstock in the corner here. So I'm just going to give a little bit of glue right around the edges. And then we're going to stick this right here. So I'm just kind of put it around there. So Gloria Adams says, I bought an inexpensive Janome from Home Depot. Big mistake. I have had a Janome gym for years and love it, but in the new one worked great till I put thread in it. <laughs> you know, I, I would also recommend on sewing machines, if you have a sewing center, a place that sells sewing machines near you, go visit them, sit down and try out machines. Um, sure, you know, it's great to buy a $100, $200 machine. The machine I used was roughly $600 retail, and I got it for $450. And I really like it. It's a good machine. But that's hard to recommend to people to spend that kind of money on a sewing machine if they don't sew all the time. All right, so I'm going to just take this. I've adhered it down just so I have uh, it in place so I don't mess up as far as how big of a piece I want to tear. And I'm just going to tear this 
kind of following my image just a little bit. And I got a little close on this side, so we're going to have to get creative. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of tear from the back side like so. Yeah, I, I would have sent it back too, Gloria, if, if you were having issues with it. All right, so I'm just tearing this off here. If you tear forward, you're going to get that feathered edge look. If you tear away from you, it's going to have a more soft, uh, not that feathered edge look. Does that make a difference? All right, so then we're going to tear this piece. All right. Have I lost you? You're still with me, everybody? <laughs> Have a good day, Krista. Have a good day tomorrow. <laughs> I know some of you are, are getting here uh, at your bedtime. I know that Naomi got here as she woke up this morning. I think it's pretty early there for her. It's hard to find a good time for everybody, but I thought 4 p.m. would be a good time. Angelica's still awake. She's still awake. <laughs> All right. So I've just added distress ink around that. And I like using a little bit darker. It just, I don't know. I like the way it looks. What do you think? You like it? All right. So now I'm going to add some glue to my doily here and put it, let's kind of put it where it's offset because my piece is bigger than my doily. And then I'm going to put glue on the back side. And we're going to stick this down with this lace over lace. What do you think? Like that. My uh, words that I created, you liking it? Is that looking good? Okay, so the words that I cut out earlier they're on um, text weight paper, so I want it to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to glue it down onto a piece of cardstock here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back side. And stick that down kind of in the corner here, and I'll trim it out with scissors. Isn't the bird pretty? I really like it. All right, so we're going to cut this out. We're going to use some distress ink. Where is it? I may have to call out later when I can't find something so you can tell me where it is. <laughs> if you follow me on Facebook, you saw me share a picture of my work table when I cleaned it the other day. <laughs> All right, so I think next what I want to do is I want to apply some ribbon behind that little word. So I've got this. I take my ribbon off the spools, and I'll, I'll show this right now, and I re-spool them. Because having rolls of ribbon is really hard to store, but... If you take it off, like I did here, this is one of those 12 by 12 iris storage things. And what I've done is I put some, uh, I had some plastic dividers that were for scrap paper and I taped it in and then I made these rows and then I took my ribbon and wrapped it around pieces of cardboard. And now I can look at my ribbon this way. I don't have all my ribbon, but I'm getting there done like this. So if I know I want purple, I can just come in here and grab a purple. If I need a pink, then I can just come in here and grab a pink. And then when I'm done, I put them back. So I thought I'd share that as a storage tip. <laughs> ah, you're still there? I didn't take the camera away. <laughs> all right. I'm all over the place, y'all. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece and we're going to lay it kind of under here and I think I want to do let's do it like this I want to cut a second one like that all right so we've got two little pieces here 
So I'm going to take some glue. Oh, so uh, I think that Kat is asking about my plastic sleeves that I store my scraps in. And I'll get one of those in just a moment and show you what that looks like. I bought mine a long time ago at my, no, Hobby Lobby, I think it was. But I know that you can get them on Amazon. And I'll show you what they look like here in just a moment. So I just kind of crisscross that on the back of my sentiment. And then I'm going to place that somewhat down here on the bottom. All right, let me do this and then we'll get the um, storage thing. So now I've got some tulip glitter paint. Yeah, Debbie, it's so much handier to have your lace and trim and ribbon stored like that because then you can see it. All right. No, they are not bigger than 12 by 12. They're, they're slightly bigger than 12 by 12, Cat. All right. So I'm going to take some of this glitter paint and I'm going to put it on. I'm just kind of scribbling it on in place. And I'm going to go down the birdie. Kind of add a little accent. This reminds me of seeing some really vintage things on that you may have seen in the past that had glitter on it. And I like using this glitter paint because the glitter doesn't fall off like it would if you were using, uh, you know, glue and sprinkling glitter over the top of it. Sometimes I'll use my finger to kind of give that little bit more glitter and that'll dry clear in a moment. All right, let's see here. Let me get one more thing that I want to put on here because I know I have them. I had these little flat black pearls and they're in a row stuck together. So I'm gonna use them as they are. And we're gonna put them right here. And then I didn't show this on earlier, but I've got this trim. I, I bought this trim a while back and it's just pretty little flowers. You see that little pretty, that's the back side. So we're going to put a little bit of glue on the back side. <laughs> I'm not going that fast, Robin. I'm talking the whole time. <laughs> but I think I've got this to a point that I can leave this right here and I'm going to go grab something. So that is the way I made these journal cards. So when you saw these... I didn't use the napkin. I used another paper in the background, but that's the same way that I made these cards, okay? With the layers on them. All right, let me grab one of my uh, scrap pockets and I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> You're almost there, Robin. Keep going. <laughs> oh, I I understand. Robin says she d lost her doilies on her desk under all the stuff. <laughs> yes, they would be perfect for a journal cover. So this is perfect. Just at attach the whole thing. And everybody keeps asking me to show projects without sewing. There's no sewing in this project. All right, I'm going to set this one aside because it's still wet. So here is one of my 12 by 12 pockets, okay? And basically, so I'll get a 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper here. So here's a 12 by 12, and you can kind of see that it's just a little bit bigger. Oh, let me get in the shot. It's a little bit bigger than the pocket. And I think I found these, they were like a set of four at Hobby Lobby, four or five in a package. And I just put everything because they're sturdy. They're really sturdy. But you can also use those oversized um, Ziploc bags. Uh, you've all seen those oversized Ziploc bags. Those also work well too. And what I do is if I have a leftover scrap 
then it just goes in here. Even, you know, when I die cut stuff, it goes in here because sometimes you can use a little bitty punch and get a shape. So here is, here is my a little bitty heart punch. So you can see this little scrap. And if I line this up in here, ah, it went flying. Um, now I've got a little heart out of that scrap. So this piece, I would throw away probably. But I'm also looking at it going, you know what? This would be kind of cute. Y'all, you're going to laugh at me. Okay, I think if I were to take that. Okay, let me, let me find a piece of paper. All right, so we're going to take this. And it's almost square. It's almost square. So I'm just folding a piece of paper up. And we're going to trim this off. Let's put some glue in here. Let's cut it in half so I don't have to use all of that. We don't need all that thickness. All right, so we're going to put a little piece of glue. <laughs> yeah, these pouches are sturdier than the Ziploc bags from the Dollar Tree. They do cost more. So I'm just going to fold that over. So now I've created a little corner piece that could be a tuck spot. I've got to find my... Let's get rid of this for a second. I've got too many things on my desk again. All right, where's my blending to tool, y'all? Do you see it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So I'm going to put some distressed ink on here. And then we had some of this napkin. So I'm going to grab a little piece of this napkin. And I think what I want to do is cut it. I'm going to add some distress ink to that. We're going to adhere this down. This is on the fly, y'all. A little bit of glue on this. We'll stick this on here. And then we're going to add some distress ink to the heart piece. I'm going to put a little glue on it. Try not to put too much. All right, where's the lid? And if I don't put the lid back on glue bottles, it ends up everywhere. Okay, so then we're going to take this piece and put it on top. And look, I just, oh, I just made a little corner tuck. <laughs> Naomi says she missed what happens from the doily onwards because the baby got stinky. All right, so here's what I did, Naomi, is I took the calico collage image and layered it onto a piece of purple cardstock and tore it all the way around, added distress ink to that edge. Then I layered it on top of the doily, on top of the napkin and the lace. Then I added the words. This I backed with another piece of paper so it was thicker. I added this little piece of trim down here at the bottom. There's ribbon behind the saying and then beads here. Okay. So, you know, this is just something that you can put together really quickly. In fact, what I may do is, I think that needs a rhinestone or a pearl. Here we go. We got some more flat back pearls. I'm trying to use up these flat back pearls that I have had forever. So let's cut one of those apart. And we'll stick that right here. Like that. Just adding a little bit to it. Bling! <laughs> Gloria says there are also project bags for quilt projects. So that may be something else you want to look at is they're going to be heavier because they're designed to hold fabric and your pattern and whatnot. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Aren't the flowers pretty? 
there's a lot of pretty, that's why I asked Norella to make these because I wanted some more floral pieces and she obliged and made them for me. I like that. Okay, so I showed you how to adhere a napkin to a page and then we used it as an element for a journal card. And we also made a little pocket, okay? What else you want to see in the time that we have that you want to stick around with me? Here, I've got another piece here. So I think what I'm going to do now is we're going to make a different kind of a pocket. So let's see. I'm going to go, I'm going to trim this. So I'm going to look at it and kind of trim off the edge. And. Let's go this way. I think I want about a four inch wide pocket. So I'm going to trim off the excess side here. And I like my pockets to be kind of sturdy. So I'm going to go about four inches wide. And that'll work. We'll do it like that. See you later, Norella. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, so now I'm going to make a little pocket. So I've just made about four inches by, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six-ish inches, whatever. It was just a piece of scrap. <laughs> so I'm going to take the top and fold this over like so. And I'm going to look at the bottom. Let's see. I think I want to go right about here. And I'm folding that over. And then I'm going to go back this way. So I'm making kind of an accordion fold here. And I'm folding it back this way. So there's a pocket that's coming up. Okay. And then I'm going to fold this one more time. Let's see. Let's go right about here. And right about there. And so now we have one, two, and then this will be the third pocket. And what I'll do next is take the Distress Ink and go around the edges. And I'll even go on these edges where the folds are so it's a little bit more distinct. I've showed this tutorial before where I sew the pocket as well. So we've got those pieces. So now we're going to adhere it. This one was done with the glue stick, so the glue stick didn't stick. And just add more. All righty. Okay. So now I'm going to put some glue on here. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right on the back side of this portion of the pocket to hold that in place. I'm gonna flip it up. I'm gonna put glue right here on this portion of the pocket and that'll go down. And then we're gonna flip this up and we're gonna put glue right here and right here and flip that back. And then sometimes you don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue right there and flip that down. And I'm gonna put a little glue here to keep this together. Smush, smush. Anybody have any questions? If you have questions, this is the time to ask. All right, I'm gonna clean my hands. I now have glue all over them. I keep a little spray bottle on my desk. This one I put, I, it may sound strange to you, it kind of dries your hands out, but it's got alcohol in it. It's got uh, really cheap isopropyl alcohol because sometimes the adhesives are sticky and I just want to quickly clean my hands off. So I just spray them. And then I've shared this before. Um, I have a bunch of these hand towels that I picked up and what I do is use them until they're filthy and wash them. So here's one here's one that needs to be washed. <laughs> it gets a little dirty.
So Shauna wants to know how often do you tea coffee dye paper? I don't. <laughs> I do not coffee dye or tea dye paper. Uh, what I do is I spray them with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist as I need them. So that way I don't have to store them. But I know other people will do like a ream of paper at a time. So no, it is not wrinkling the paper. I don't know if you can see that. It's staying pretty flat. So here's the top part that's pretty flat on there. So it's not wrinkling up. And it's a lot about how much paper uh, you use. Yeah, Robin, it is a lot cheaper to use a towel and spray to keep your hands clean. All right, so there's a pocket and we can embellish this up. So let's add some embellishments to it. So I'm going to think I'm going to add these little pieces of trim here. Better for the environment. Yes. Yes, Debbie says she's even sprayed with diluted coffee one piece at a time. I haven't done it yet, but I just purchased some instant coffee and I thought I would, I got to find a spray bottle that isn't in use. I would fill it with the instant coffee and see how that worked out. See you later, Cindy. So glad you have stopped by. Good night. <laughs> yeah, the instant paper, instant coffee from Dollar Tree is great. I think I have it. Yeah, here it is. Here's what I got for a dollar. I got 2.8 ounces for a dollar. Let's see if I can find an empty spray bottle. Of course, since you're watching, I won't be able to find one, right? <laughs> it's usually how it goes. Oh, here we go. I've got an empty Tattered Angels bottle. I always save my Tattered Angels bottles in case the sprayer goes bad on one. <laughs> All right, so I've got, I always keep a bottle of water nearby. So let's open up this coffee. It doesn't even smell like coffee. <laughs> doesn't even smell like coffee. All right, give me a moment. I've got to uh, clean my sprayer just a little bit. Because I, so I sometimes I try to remember to go to the sink and wash out my Tattered Angel sprayers. And sometimes I forget <laughs> to do that. So I'm using my paint water to kind of clear out the pink that was in there. <laughs> it probably does taste nasty. <laughs> okay, so I got a spray bottle. Let me fit a little bit of water in it to rinse out the pink because we don't want pink, right, y'all? See, it's still a little bit of pink in there. Keep my stuff handy. All right, I think I even have a little bitty spoon here. Let me find it. I have a, I have a little spoon. All right, so this is going to be purely experimental. So I've got this little spoon. So I'm just going to put a bunch of coffee in here. I don't know how much to, how much you think we need. <laughs> don't drink this, y'all. <laughs> okay. Eh. What we'll do is we'll add a little bit of, <laughs> don't pour the water over the coffee. <laughs> Lori says too much. That was too much. I doubt it. I think we may like it dark. All right, so I'm going to fill this up a little bit. I'm going to put the spray nozzle on it. I'm wiping the crusties off. 
All right, and this is going to be pretty dark. All right, so maybe it was too much, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just move this out of the way. Clean, clear my space off. We're just move it to the side. <laughs> Angelica says more coffee. <laughs> yes, you would be glittery inside if you drank this. All right, so now let's get. We got my spray box. Let's get a let's get a piece of blank paper out. And I just use a spray box to keep from having to clean up my desk. <laughs> All righty. So here's my lace stencil that I made. So let's see what happens. Okay, I'm shaking it up really good. Oh, yeah, if we could put wine in it, it would be really good, too. <laughs> All right, let's see if this is actually going to work. It's not really dark. It's pretty light. I don't know if you can see the color coming up. I'm putting a lot on there though. So I'm going to use this to mop up and it's going to get different colors because there was colors on my stencil. Okay, now I smell the coffee. Now I smell the coffee. <laughs> so that has some of my tattered angels and the coffee on there. And then let's pull this up. So we have a little bit, what do you think? That's the coffee color. And we got the purple because that was on my stencil. So I'm going to dry it just a little bit. See, Angelica was right. More coffee. You know, I do not know if the coffee smell stays. Some people say it does. Um, Robin, does the coffee smell stay whenever you make coffee dyed papers? Naomi says yes. And Lori says it will darken as it dries. So it's getting a little bit darker. The smell fades, Kylie says. Uh, Robin says you'll get the smell of coffee if you get it wet again. You can air it out. Just leave it somewhere to dry all the way and a day or two and it will dry up. And it does, it does smell pretty, I'm smelling it here. Let me get my, it smells pretty good. <laughs> so that is using coffee and what was on my stencil anyway. So you can see where here I was a bit heavier handed adding it and it's lighter over here. So it's very vintage looking. You can also do the same thing with tea. Debbie is reminding us, you know, you can put tea, make a really strong batch of tea, put like two or three tea bags and get some hot water. Kylie says the smell of tea is not near as strong as the coffee is. So if you aren't a coffee fan, you want the color, use the tea. Hey, Susan, so glad you're here. Glad you could stop by. We're just playing around. Now you want a cup of coffee. Well, I don't, I don't want to give you one of these. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do one more. Let's spray another one. All right, so let me get another piece of paper. Let's get a different stencil and see what it looks like with a different stencil. By the way, I have these stencils in my shop. So if you're looking for unique stencils, check it out. I have this one. Now this one's going to bleed a little bit black because I've been spraying black on it. But this is my spider web stencil. I'm so glad you're here, Teresa. Oh, you want me to add more coffee before I spray? Okay, I'll add more coffee. So here's my, get my thing. Okay, and I'll also just no stenciling as, bleh. Naomi said no stencil. You like my spider web, Debbie? I made that. This is a stencil that I made. And I have it in my shop uh, for $10.99, which includes shipping inside the United States. If you're outside the United States, just message me with your address and an email address. And I will tell you how much it is for shipping. It's usually not much more if that's all you're getting is a stencil. 
if you're outside the United States, because it comes in a nine by 11, nine by 12 um, uh, envelope. All right, so I put some more coffee in there. I'm gonna poke it down in and shake it up. Thank you, Kali, for sharing my shop. Hey, Debbie, or Donna, so glad, to, I tried to call you Debbie. Donna, so glad you're here. Uh, aren't you in Canada, I think? I'm not positive. I think it is. Good night, Tina. All right, so we're going to spray over the stencil. So I've just got the coffee, instant coffee and water. And I'm being heavy-handed because I want some more. It's a lot darker now that I've added more to it. And I'm going to mop up. So this is going to get some of that black as well because my stencil, I don't wash my stencils. Canada, I thought you were in Canada. All right, so then let's peel this up. So there's the coffee with a little bit of the black tattered angels on top. And then here it is through the stencil. And that'll dry and get darker. All right, so now let's just get a plain piece of paper. I just put a handful of copy paper in here. So I have Moppet papers to use. It's kind of fun. And this stencil I have in my shop. So again, if uh, you are outside the U.S. and you want this stencil, just message me with your address, email address, and I'll let you know. How much it costs all right so again we've got instant coffee in water and i'm just reusing a spray bottle and we're just going to spray it like that and then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to flip it over and kind of mop up the excess so that'll give it a neat look as well. You can almost see the texture in the paper just a little bitty bit. Yes, Robin says you can sprinkle the coffee on the paper. So you can just take a little bit of this coffee and just kind of sprinkle it on. And then I'm gonna take my same spray So it's going to have deeper concentration of color on it. Okay. We can make it move. Make it move. Make it move. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I was crazy, did you? Debbie knew. She's known me longer than anybody else. Warm water make it dissolve better. Well, you know, I'm in my room and we're using what we have. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try heating it and see how fast it kind of dries on there. So it'll have little crusty bits, and it smell. I can really smell it. I'm gonna let it. <laughs> Our artists are a little crazy. I think all humans are a little crazy. Oh. I have a I have a broken bit on my nail. So Lori says you need to add baking soda to your coffee mixture or the acid in the coffee we eat your paper up. Well, that's part of the reason why I don't use coffee or tea. I that's why I use um, the tattered angels because I don't want to have to mix a whole bunch. I'm not a chemist. I may play at one, but I'm really not. <laughs> Ah, uh, Lisa says, if you don't like the smell of coffee, you can add vanilla. We could also probably add some other scents. What else do I have in here? I've got, I've got jasmine and what else do I have? I have some lavender and lilac. I don't think that would go really well with the coffee though. <laughs> So that's kind of, it's kind of neat the way this looks on there. What do you think? It's different. All righty. Let's see what else we got. Texture, texture. All right. So we played with coffee. You got to see that. I now smell like coffee. <laughs> 
Ooh, chocolate sauce. Now, Cheryl, we're just going to eat the chocolate sauce. We're not going to put it in the coffee, <laughs> in the spray, anyhow. Now, real coffee, I will. <laughs> oh, all right. I've got, I'm, I'm double drinking here. I've got two different cups so I don't run out. All righty. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's try something else here. I've got, I've got my little tray. And we're going to put some coffee in my tray. And we're going to put some water in the coffee. And if it was hot water, it would be better. We know that, Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> I got a paintbrush, so I'm just going to use it to stir the coffee around a little bit. Okay, so basically I've just made my own little mixture of water here and coffee. Oh, yeah, the uh, Easter egg dye is also great to dye with as well. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. This is kind of like watercolor. It's a cold, a hot press, smooth watercolor paper. And I'm going to grab a couple of stamps. Let's see here. Let's get that one. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to take just kind of, I'm making a mess and I'm just going to push it straight onto, and I'm not worried that it's not a perfect image, okay? I'm just going to let it do what it does. And it's just a great way to add texture really fast using coffee. So I'm going to use my heat tool and dry that. Kool-Aid is also a great dye, Lisa says, and it smells good. I've done the same technique using acrylic paint too. I uh, put a little bit in a palette, uh, just a little bit of water, and you get some neat effects. So that's drying pretty good. There's a few wet spots on there. Isn't that cool, the way that looks? I mean, this is a good, you know, just to add a little bit of interest to a journal card. All right, let's grab a different one. Let's set that aside. Let's grab a different one. All right, so I got a, I got a different stamp. This one's just circles. So I'm just going to grab that. So it's going to look like little miniature, in my opinion, uh, coffee rings, maybe, maybe, kind of messy. And I'm okay with the splotches. I think that adds interest. What do you think? You like that? <laughs> yeah, you got to find the formula that works. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I like the way this one looks too. It's kind of, I'm just drying it just a little bit. Just so that it's not too runny. This is the first one I made. And then here's the second one. And I guess if I want, I can make it run just a little bit. Kind of get that run look. Just by tilting it. You like that? All right. Any more questions? Any more things you want me to show you today? I've got some. You want to see my happy mail? I got a couple of packages in the mail. I could show those if you're interested. Oh, yeah, so an acid-free dye. Well, I know that the Tattered Angels would fit that need as well. 
Edwin says he used alcohol with instant coffee and it dries faster. I can make room on my desk for happy mail, Naomi. Doesn't take me that long. <laughs> Um, Lori says you can also put the re-inker for the distressed ink into a spray bottle and do the same thing or mix it with water. So that's another technique that you can use. <laughs> so distressed ink will work as well. I've got here, let me move. All right. So we've got, what do you think? That, that's kind of interesting. Do you like that look? Is that kind of a neat look? You like that? Yeah. Uh, Susan says she just smears her ink pad and goes with it like that. So I'm going to take this and we're going to, we're not going to play with the coffee anymore. I'm done. I'm going to dump it out. Set my tray aside. All right. So let's get a re-inker out. And I've got, I've got walnut stain re-inker. I'm dropping my stuff again. I've got another tray. And I'm going to get another piece of paper. All right, so I'm going to put, I've got this little bit of distressed re-inker. Look how dirty my hands are getting already. I'm just going to put a little bit right there. I'm going to put a drop of water. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my stamp that I used earlier. So I'm just going to spray it with my alcohol and wipe it off. And then let's see what this looks like. We'll compare it. So I'm just kind of marching it around. Now it's messy, okay? So it's all drippy and messy. It's a lot darker. I kind of like it. All right, so that's a little bit darker than the other. And I don't have water, so I'm going to use my alcohol and just kind of spray this and see what it does. And that causes that ink to move just a little bit. It's really dark. Uh, Kat, if you want to share something with me, I have Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube. I don't remember what the other is. <laughs> so you can share that. What do you think? You like that? That's kind of interesting as well. So I'm going to try something else. We're going to... We're going to get a different color of Distress Ink. We're going to use Vintage Photo. So it's going to be a lot lighter, okay? I'm going to clean my stamp off again. And grab a... All right, so I've got Vintage Photo. So I'm going to put a little drop of Vintage Photo on here. Just a couple. I guess this one's almost empty. I may have to order some more. So I'm going to put just a little bit of water. Okay. Same stamp. This time I'm going to kind of work, work it, work it, work it. All right, so then let's see what happens. So it's pretty dark too. But if you stamp off, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to do this. So that kind of gives a little bit different look. So here is the vintage photo on this side. And then this is the walnut stain that doesn't have the big blob in there. Kind of neat, huh? Kind of playing with that. So there are some ways of mark making. Uh, someone else had said you could use plastic. So let's do that with a um, craft sheet. 
So here I've got a craft sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ink. This is the walnut stain and this is the vintage photo. And I'm going to pour it onto my palette here. Okay. So we just kind of put that on there. Set this aside. I'm going to grab another journal card. So I got another journal card and I'm just going to swipe it through. Oh, and my, my, I have glitter. You see the glitter on there? I don't know if y'all can see the glitter. My uh, mat had some glitter on it. So let's just see what happens. That's interesting how it's, it's really dark with the distressed ink. What do you think? You can, well, she didn't want to have Facebook at all. So you, I don't have a way yet on my blog <laughs> for you to share a photo with me unless you do it through Facebook. But if you use Instagram or Twitter, you can tag me on those. And that kind of a neat effect. And so you could take another piece of paper on top of this one, and I'm just going to sandwich them together and rub them. Rub. So that gives a little bit different effect. Let me grab, grab some more of this color. It's kind of a neat effect. And if you've got different colors of reinkers, you can do a lot of things. Yeah, it, it is messy. It's a messy look, but I kind of like it. I like the way it looks. And so this will dry. It'll have different degrees of darkness to it, I'm sure, once it's dry. I don't have a sample that's dry to show you, so we can use the heat tool. Yeah, you can spritz it with alcohol or uh, water. So I've got some al alcohol here, so I'm just going to kind of... And that changes it. See how that changed it? it? Changed the color just a little bit. And let's do it. Let's do it on this one that's almost dry and see what it does. So that kind of changes it and it dries it into the paper a little better. I did some embossing and so I have gold glitter from gold embossing powder on my mat. Yeah, it does have kind of a copper look to it, especially with the glitter. <laughs> so if you don't clean your surfaces, you know, they can uh, have glitter on them. What do you think? <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, I've been on here an hour and a half. Are y'all having fun? Are you learning anything? <laughs> you like this kind of grunge, Cheryl? <laughs> so uh, Naomi says, but when mixing color, dry the color layers in between. It's pretty much like if you use the... Um, uh, distressed oxide ink pads. You can, you want to call you want to dry in between. Okay. Loving this. All right. Good, good, good. I'm glad you're liking this. You're loving it. All right. So let's clean up and, uh, I'm, I'm using a paper towel to clean up the ink and some of the glitter. <laughs> All right. Oh, you want to see the happy mail? Okay, let's show what happy mail I have. I don't have very much. I think I have two packages. But you like that? Was that neat? Do you like it? You like it? Okay. All right. I'm gonna wipe my wipe my hands up. Move this out of the way. Find my towel. Yeah, you know, and I keep like four or five towels near me. <laughs> All right, so I've got two happy mails. I was trying not to show the address. This first one is from Jacqueline and Jack Jacqueline Summer Kelly. She's an admin in my Facebook group. And so we did a tag swap. And this is tags that she created for me. So I want to show you what she created. So this is a tag that's a really heavy, heavy. I mean, it's almost like wood. It's really 
thick chipboard maybe and it looks like she's layered some scrapbook paper she's even die cut a leaf or two here and she made little flowers and she put celebrate on it and then that's the back side it's the same paper it's really pretty and then she made these other little tags so this one she's used some music in the background she probably cut out an image off of a card or some ephemera and she used a sticker it looks like and here she's used maybe a part of a stationery or an old greeting card they're really pretty and then this one i really liked it says in all the world there is no one like you and that's probably off of a greeting card but she put a little piece of lace here that she sewed down add the yellow so it's really quite pretty she probably I don't know if she added some distressing because this is a different color here. So really pretty. And then she just, little note card that she sent to me. says, I hope you enjoy the tag, tags I made for you. And that's from Jacqueline Kelly. So let's put this uh, away. And then the next one is from Robin. <clears throat> Robin is helping us out today uh, doing the admin. So I appreciate her. Okay, I got this. So let's start with, she sent me some stamps. These are from Hampton Art. I don't know if you can see that. Let's turn it where you can see it. So they're little balloon hearts and flowers and butterflies. And here's an iris type and a little uh, stem and flowers. And it says, I'm so grateful uh, with heart felt thanks is what it says down here yes i got it thank you thank you thank you hey stacy so glad you're here when we're done you can uh, watch it from the beginning all right so then she wrote me a little note and she says i hope you enjoy the tags i chose to make for you for our admin swap the sunflower tag represents not so much what fjjp uh friendly junk journal people means to me, but what I have learned being your admin. The extra goodies I hope you will find uh, use for. I truly enjoy being your admin, and I hope you know um, let's see how much this group means to me. And that's from Robin. And Robin is uh, helping me today with admin duties as well. And so she's made, looks like she's made little special pockets to hold the tags. Oh, wow. Look at this. So she's, hers are really thick too. Like she's got several layers of paper here. And look at this little image with the, is that lilac? It's either lilac or a butterfly bush. And it says beautiful memories. And it has little paper flowers and lace on here and some bling. Isn't that pretty? And then let's flip it over. So she's made used some bling and some lace and she's made a pocket. So here's a little pocket. This looks like postage note size. And then there's several pages that she's done. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Thank you, Robin. This is absolutely beautiful. Look at the, even the little bling in the flower there. Isn't that pretty? I love the shape. So Robin, was this a die that you used to make this? shape i like it it's really pretty so that was one tag so let's pull out the second one and so this is the sunflower one and it says laugh often out loud at yourself <laughs> cricket okay perfect so she used her cricket to cut this paper you just cut two and then put them back to back isn't that gorgeous so, Robin, is this scrapbook paper or is this a napkin? It's really pretty. Oh, it must be scrapbook paper. Because here's some more. She made little tags on the back side and fussy cut one of the flowers as a tuck spot, gluing it down here and use all of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, and then she's got, here's an envelope of goodies. So, let's see what's in there. Oh, Robin knows I love dragonflies. And so she sent me a dragonfly charm. That's beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Robin. And I also like peacocks. I'm I'm collecting stuff to make another peacock journal. And so these are, are they 
probably iron on or something. The safe, yeah, iron on. There's an iron. There's an iron on there. <laughs> and look at all these little feathers. I don't know if you can see them in the package. Those are darling. I love it. Thank you, Robin. You are so awesome. I really appreciate you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so special. I feel so good. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, everybody. Any more questions? Anything else you want me to share or talk about before we get off here? <sighs> hey, Dawn and Marion. Carrie, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, she did a great job. This is what we made today, Carrie and Dawn and Miriam. Thank you, Lori. You're so sweet. <laughs> oh, Carrie, don't get lost. <laughs> we, um, we ended up attaching a napkin to... A, a Bible page. So, uh, Carrie, you're gonna have to watch. You're gonna have to watch from the beginning <laughs> if you didn't see it. Okay, good. I'm glad she fixed you. Um, I think, I think that's all the packages I got right now. So I'm glad you're here, Carrie. That's all the packages I have right now uh, to share. I shared some last week in the live feed, and I haven't picked up my mail today, so I don't know if I have any more. Look at my hand, y'all. I'm messy. <laughs> yeah, definitely watch from the game. We're having fun here, um, and that's what the live is about. So. The live is about having fun, getting messy, asking questions. I know some people don't like live videos. Well, I understand. That's why I have my tutorials that I put out. I am also going to be putting out uh, really soon. I've, I've finished the videos today, and then I uh, need to edit them, but I'm going to have a workshop uh available. I'm going to have two of them. I'm going to have one that's through Canvas Court Brands. And so you'll be able to take this Junk Journal 101 workshop. If you want to buy the kit, you can buy the kit or you can just take the workshop by yourself. Good night, Angelica. And then I'm working on another workshop that's going to be a custom-made junk journal that's purple. Uh, the lady is a pastor, and so she wanted some spiritual sayings inside of it. So that'll be another workshop that I'll have. And I have lots of tutorials, free tutorials that'll be coming out here on YouTube. For example, I have my mixed media Halloween paper bag junk journal say that really fast three times <laughs> mixed media paper bag junk journal it's halloween themed and that should be coming out really soon i'll also have some more um tag tutorials that were sent to the other admin ladies i have one that's going to have a b on it one that's a shabby chic pink i've got another one that'll be christmas themed so we're going to have a lot of that so we're, there's a lot coming to my channel. And again, you know, if you see a post from me, whether it be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, whatever you love, um, make sure you comment and share that project with others so they'll see it so that I can, you know, grow my audience here on YouTube. I am this close, really close to making my first um, benchmark. I, my husband said it's not a goal. I call it a goal. I don't know what else you call it, but I'm trying to get to where I'm making approximately $100 a day with all my social media and sales and with um, things that I sell in my shop, things that I get commissions on. So I'm really, really close. So if you plan on buying anything, come see me first, use my link and buy through me if you're going to buy anyway. Um, if you're looking for something custom made, let me know and I can help you with that as well. So I've got lots of awesome things coming in the works. You definitely want to 
Uh, keep following. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you get notification. This is a pocket that we made earlier. So if you didn't see that, that was a pocket we made using the Bible page that we covered with the napkin. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate the support that all of you give. Um, guys and gals alike coming to my channel and hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And I try to make it fun and do some things that you like to uh, see. So definitely share this video after we're done. And I probably, I'm, I think I'm going to do a giveaway soon. So make sure that you follow me on lindaisrael.com uh, and see the things that I have there. Oh, Carrie wants to know, explain how to use a link so I get credit for Amazon purchases. So anytime that I share products, yes, we did, Naomi, it was often. Awesome. Um, anytime I share a product and in my description box or on my blog, if I have a link and it takes you to Amazon, if you buy anything from that point on, I get a little bit of commission. I get a better commission if you buy the item that was the link, but say you got to Amazon for looking at the distressed ink and you decide, well, I don't really want um, walnut stain distressed ink. I want a different color. So you search and you find a different color on the same visit to Amazon and you buy a different color. Well, I get credit for that other color. So anytime you use my link that takes you to Amazon, I get a little bit of credit if you buy something. So if you want to buy your groceries, if you buy um, paper, if you buy trim or doilies or whatever off of one of my links, then I get a little bit of commission off of it. So thank you. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate it. All right, everybody. Anything else? We've been here for an hour and a half. I'm having fun and I don't mind. I just know that a lot of people are busy. <laughs> they want to get back to life. <laughs> Um, I am going to start doing a few um, story time with Linda. One of them is going to be about uh, Facebook tips and tricks. I'll probably do maybe a Pinterest tips and tricks. By the way, I do have Pinterest, and that's another way you can share with me. You can create something on Pinterest, and you can tag me on there as well. You can use motivated creator as the hashtag. So I'm going to put that in here so it's. Oh, if I can get on the right spot, go right here. Okay, hashtag. So if you use motivated creator on social media, every once in a while what I'll do is I'll do a Google search to see who's posted to motivated creator and see what you've posted. And the reason why I use that is I figured if you're seeing my project and you got motivated to create something, you're a motivated creator. All right. Anything else anybody wants or shares or asks or see or. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate y'all being here. I'm going to get off here in about two more minutes, probably. I'm just letting everybody have an opportunity to ask questions if they haven't. So here's some more of my tags that I made. Carrie, I could probably get you chocolate. It would be faster if you got it yourself. <laughs> I will do this again soon, Debbie. In fact, I'm trying to do them on Mondays. I'll be able to do one next Monday, and then I'll take a week off because I'm going on vacation. But Mondays at 4 p.m., I try to schedule it. I'll have an event on Facebook, and then I schedule it on YouTube so you can see it there. And we'll see what we can uh, figure out what we're going to do for the next project. If there's a project that you want, Dawn gave you some chocolate, Carrie. It's right there. You just got to grab it off the screen. Um, if there's something that you want to see in particular, more detail, more explanation, definitely message me or even comment here. That's something you're looking for. Okay. Pastel Cat wants fall stuff. So I'm just got through doing some Halloween stuff, but oh, Ellen, it, you'll be able to um, 
<laughs> You'll be able to watch it again as soon as I end the stream. You can refresh your screen and watch it from the beginning. So you'll be able to see the two ways that I attached a napkin and then used it. All righty. Anything else? Fall stuff. Somebody wants fall stuff. <laughs> Carrie got her chocolate. She's saying yummy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. I greatly appreciate you. I'm going to get off here. So it, here, here we go. This is our tradition. I'm going to say, okay, you hang up. No, no, no. You hang up. <laughs> Are you going to hang up? <laughs> you got to you gotta check your uh, time zone, Ellen. Check your time zone. Make sure that you're in the right time zone. Even when I was setting up this YouTube, it keeps trying to put me in a different time zone. So I have to go fix it. <laughs> Say, no, you hang up. You've got to hang up. <laughs> Ellen doesn't want me to go. <laughs> Kylie says, love and peace. Yes, you, use the YouTube reminder. It uses the, set, the time zones. You'll have to watch that. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry, Ellen, that you weren't able to get here at the beginning, but definitely refresh and watch the beginning of it. <laughs> I'm glad, Carrie. I'm really glad. Carrie said it's been the highlight of her day. <laughs> Oh, good, Ellen. So basically, I kind of go over it with you. Here's what we did was I took the napkin. Let me find the napkin one. Here it is. So the napkin page, you can't really see it as well, but I took the napkin and tore it and layered it onto my paper. And I sprayed a piece of lace with Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. I used a doily and add some distress ink. So there's your layers. You've got cardstock, napkin, paper. We've got the lace, the doily. Then I took the calico collage image and mounted it on a piece of cardstock and trimmed that out and adhered that down. I put some tulip dimensional glitter paint. I don't know if you can see the glitter. This is what I use, tulip dimensional glitter paint. Kind of see it on there. I layered the saying sentiment with some ribbon behind it. I added the trim here and I added these little pearls. Okay. I'm glad you enjoyed your time here, uh, Kat. Yay, Debbie, get in there and create, create, create. Um, in fact, uh, Debbie and anybody else that's local, I'm going to have two workshops coming up. One of them is a the mixed media paper bag workshop that's going to be at my shop here in Oklahoma. I got, think I have it for October the 13th. I think I have to look at my calendar. <laughs> and I'm also going to do a hat. Um, workshop for a fascinator. So if you're wanting to come hang out with me in person, I've got some uh, workshops coming up. Oh, good, Ellen. You're going to like using that glue. And when I you refresh this video, you'll see how I used it to attach the napkin to the page. Okay, so Ellen, if you have a tacky spot left over after using the best glue ever, you can use and I'll, I'll show you two things. If, if you want to put it on lace, here's what I suggest. Is that you put it on the paper first and make a bead of glue. Let it air dry. Then lay the lace on top of it. And the glue will not seep through the lace. It'll just stick. But if you have already put it down and you've got it tacky, you can use the perfect crafting pouch and just pat it to your project and wipe it off and Carrie is saying that you can also use baby powder and that will take the stickiness away from the best glue ever okay does that help but that's what I do is I'll put a little bead down let it air dry and then stick the lace on top of it all right oh <laughs> don't throw it out <laughs> there's always a way there's always a way <laughs> uh, Carrie uses the 
the baby powder a lot, she said. Oh, I bet it was pretty. All right, any more questions before I go? Nope, you didn't screw up. It was just probably needed to, I would just put a bead down, let that air dry, then put the lace on top, okay? Thank you so very much, Mia. I'm glad you were able to stop by. Good to see you here. <laughs> all right. I think I'm going to get off here. <laughs> yes, we all make mistakes, but we can usually figure a way out of it. You know, you can uh, put the <laughs> have drinks. <laughs> you can put baby powder on it or use the perfect pou uh, pouch on there. There's always a way, you know, I even have in my, um, I have a mixed media video that I did and I dropped paint onto my project. Well, it just made a splatter. So I just took my paintbrush and just started splattering more paint. <laughs> <clears throat> And, you know, and that's just in gesso. That's right. You just cover it with gesso, start over, no big deal. <laughs> Again, if you guys need assistance, help, inspiration, definitely check out my Facebook groups. If you're into Facebook, you can post your projects in both of my groups and not worry about haters because we get rid of those. Um you know, if you have, uh, how do I do this? Why isn't this working? How do I make this better? Definitely share that in the groups and we'll help you out. Okay. I have tons of Halloween videos, so definitely check those out. You're going to love all of those uh, projects that I'm working on. And soon I'll have my paper bag Halloween mixed media paper bag junk journal. And that should be out probably this week. I got to finish writing the blog post that goes with it. You may join that Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Come have it. Come, 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 come. We have lots of swaps too. So you can get involved in that as well. All righty. Okay. I'm going to get off here. Any more questions before I go? Because, you know, you should hang up first, not me. <laughs> uh, Carrie says, ciao. See ya. Bye-bye. Lots of love. Love you. Oh, I got to get the camera. Love you. <laughs> no, you hang up. No, no. You're going to hang up first, right? <laughs> okay, I'm getting off here. Uh, love you lots, everybody. <laughs> what? I need to wash my hands. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got to go get some soap, wash my hands. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Everyone have a fabulous day or night, depending on where you are. <laughs> Lots of love to you. Same time next Monday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on my channel. Love you guys. Have a good day. Bye. I got my finger on the trigger. I'm getting ready to pull it. Bye. <laughs>